Okay, so we're talking about how the self is actually a story. Now what I want to do is I want to show you how the story writes itself inside of us, inside of our network, okay? So this is really the whole skillfully aware programming in, in sort of a, a pithy slide here. All right, I love circles. Venn diagrams shows relationships. So the story machine is all the energy and the information that's flowing through the network that you call you. So again, now, there's a world, a context, where sights and sounds can be triggering. You were at a place at a time when something happened to you that then you thought about. There's a mind that thoughts are flowing through, and there's a body that is processing sensations. All of that is true, and what happens over time based on this flow of sights and sounds, thoughts and sensations is a narrative develops and the narrative has repetitious themes. Themes of loss, themes of injustice, themes of threat, and depending on the themes, you're gonna get the feelings that go with the themes. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so, and, and that's what's happening. Now, how does the meaning arise? What are the sort of the informational bits? What's the alphabet that makes the words and the sentences and the paragraphs and the chapters? How does that show up? Well, that shows up because sights and sounds, thoughts and sensations arise. Now, notice each of these spaces. The world, this space of the world, notice that sights and sounds are arising and you're aware of them. The teaching that's going on right now is being facilitated by the sight and the sound of Mark, right? And, and that's how it works. Sights and sounds then flow in. Now, we're going to have thoughts related to what happens outside. Now, the thoughts are going to have thoughts are, in a sense, symbolic sights and sounds. Not real sights and sounds in our heads, but they're, they're how our brain constructs a symbolic world inside of us. Some of our thoughts are sound-like. We've all had the experience of listening to our own voice in our head. Who, raise your hand if you've ever had a song stuck in your head. Yeah, all of us, right? That's a sound-like thought. So we're going to agree to call all sound-like thoughts talk, okay? And we also have picture-like thoughts in our mind. When I asked you guys to think of Eiffel Tower and then think of your mother, you, at the moment I asked you to do that, you had a picture-like thought. So we're going to agree to call all picture-like thoughts image. All right, that's, that's a bit of the information that's flowing through the network. Now, in the body, the body feels sensations, two broad categories. One broad category I call touch sensations, and touch sensations are the sensations that are telling you about your body, what's going on with your body. So, for example, warmth, coolness, tingling, pressure, pains, itches, joint position sense, comforts, discomforts, anything that is cluing you into what's going on with your body. Like if, you're, if you guys, if your eyes were closed right now, and those of you at home watching this video, close your eyes for a moment and, and see if you can tell what position you're in. Whether your hands are in your lap or your legs are crossed, notice if, Notice you can tell. How do you know? Because touch sensations are telling you so. So there's always a flow of information where the body is telling you about itself. Now, we also feel our feelings in the body as well. So remember when we talk about that story and how if there's a, a theme of threat, we feel it, that is gonna show up as what I call feel sensations or feelings that it's not, those, they are sensations, but they're not telling you about 
a body part. They're telling you about an emotional state. So if, for example, um, I get sad and I have a lump in my throat, the lump in my throat is not telling me about my trachea. It's telling me that I'm sad. And we all get that. And so notice that I've given six words to the fullness of what happens inside of ourselves. So sight, sound, talk, image, touch, feel, if you put all of that together, that makes the fullness of your experience. And the, um, there was a psychologist, his name was <coughs> William James, and he said, if you have a word for something, you'll be able to engage with it. And that's why in this program, I'm giving you six words, sight, sound, talk, image, touch, feel. So that will enable you to be able to monitor where your attention is, whether it's on sights or sounds, talk, image, touch, or feel. And if all of the parts came together, let's say you did get really triggered, in retrospect, being mindful, you could notice that, oh, sight, and then talk, and then feel. Like, you could see the parts. And in, so instead of you going down the rabbit hole, you got triggered, you got pissed off, instead of your brain doing that habitual reactivity thing, your brain would be instead in analysis. And that's two different patterns. You're using your brain two completely different ways. And so now that you have these six words, sight, sound, talk, image, touch, feel, when you sit on a meditation cushion or when you walk around, if you really do get into practicing, part of the practice is noticing and sort of naming, noting to yourself, oh, sight, and then talk, and then feel. Or if it starts in your mind, you're driving, and, and talk arises, and then image, and then feel. Like, you're the one that notices, oh, I, I, almost, I almost triggered myself. And you could say to yourself, oh, talk, image, feel. Okay, that's, that's part of this. And when it all comes together, all that meaning, that's what writes your story. It's multimodal. It's, a, it's a, a world of energy and information coming into a mind of energy and information, coupled with a body of energy and information, and the whole thing is a network, and all of it from our own personal subjective perspective, it all feels like my story. Okay? Good. All right. The repetitious self-talk, it's there in every single one of us. We have habits. And if our repetitious self-talk is negatively biased, tinged, it could lead to stress-related illnesses. The illnesses arise out of a narrative, a context that causes us to feel, that changes our biochemistry, genes turn on and off, and then we get weird problems. And then often you get a pill for it, <laughs> right? And the pill, the pill is meant, so nothing wrong with taking medicine if you know what the, you're taking the medicine for. You're taking the medicine to reduce the intensity of symptoms. That's what medicine's there for. It's to help us out. It's kind of like if you break your leg, you're using a crutch. Nothing wrong with a crutch. Great, but not forever. Does it make sense? And, and the same with the medicine, because the medicine can't shift your story. It can't shift your context. And so it's not going to change, ultimately, your relationship to yourself and things in the world. Like, you have to do that. You have to start to become more aware of what you allow yourself to focus on if you really get fixated and at night stay so fixated on a story of injustice that it's robbing you of sleep. Right? Like the, the, that's the problem. You could take a sleeping pill for that, but it's not going to solve the problem of the fixation. So that's where we have to learn how to become our own therapists. Okay, great. So you guys understand the story machine? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, just like I took that, that cup apart, we're going to get really good at taking the parts of our own experience apart. 
There is the, a domain of the world. There is a domain of the mind. There is a domain of the body. Now, let's say, let me give you um, uh, an analogy for how we're going to do this. So let's say I'm a recording artist, kind of like, um, you know, Michael Jackson, where <clears throat> I write the songs and I perform, but I don't play any of the um, instruments. I've got studio musicians to do all that for me. And so I've spent my whole summer at my beach cabin in Connecticut. I've written a whole amazing album and, and now I want to put it together. And so I go back to Nashville and I have my, my percussionist, the guy that lays down the beat, his name is Joe. And I've got my guitar player and he plays not only the rhythm guitar but the lead so i've got my band and i try to get us all in the studio together and i i'm and and, and my guitar player's name steve and so i i go joe steve can you guys let's let's arrange our schedules let's let's get together and we cannot make it happen so ultimately what i say is okay joe you go first lay down the beat and then play the bass, and then what's gonna happen? Then, Steve, you go, listen to the beat, what Joe laid down, and then you play the, the rhythm guitar over that, and then follow that with the lead guitar. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in after the fact, I'm gonna listen to what you guys did, and I'm gonna sing over the top, right? Okay, so we've we got three tracks that have come together to make a whole song, okay, kinda like that cup. Right, good, okay, now what happens is, my name's on the label, nobody knows Joe, nobody knows Steve. And so, my butt's on the line, and the record company wants this to be perfect, and so do I, and so what I do is, after the fact, I go into the studio and I listen to the whole track. But with my mind, the first thing I do is I just, even though I'm listening to the whole song, I'm just listening to Joe now. Okay, I'm listening, did he hit it all just right? Does it sound perfect? Yes, okay, he's got, I mean, it's really solid beat. I love that. And then I listen to Steve play the guitar, the rhythm, how are the voicings there, and the chords, and, and, and the spacing, everything just right. That lead guitar, oh my gosh, he really, there's, there's a great melodic feel for that. And then finally, I listen to myself. And I want to make sure I'm just hitting it all right. How's the vocal range? Everything good. And so what have I done, in a sense, when I listened to the whole song? I deconstructed it in my mind. I listened, I placed my attention on one track, then another, and then another, even though the whole thing was playing it at once. And so I was holding my attention very still, but I was staying aware of the big context, right? You're doing that already. Now, I just want you to expand that idea and apply it to your life. There are three tracks in your life. There's the track of energy and information coming in to you from the world. There's the track of your mind and then there's the track of your body. What I want you to begin to do is be able to take the tracks apart, okay? That's, that's where we're going with all of this and we're gonna do that in the meditations that follow. Good? Everybody good? All right.